Hello and welcome to this lesson of Mastering Java, Lesson 16. We're going to start talking about for loops. Combined with the if statement that we learned recently, the for loop is one of the most used, most common, most powerful parts of any programming language, especially Java. Uh, and so we have the for loop appear inside the comment, the general formula of it. Basically you're doing a bunch of stuff over and over and over again as long as the loop condition holds true. So inside of your definition you're going to initialize some counter variable. You're going to continue doing this loop as long as some condition is met. And then you're going to increment or de decrement your loop variable. And so everything inside of the four parentheses is sort of trying to tell you how you're starting your loop and, and when you're going to end up stopping your loop is effectively what this is. Now what do you do inside of your loop? For these very simple for loops is going to be the single statement that we have here. Later on we'll learn how to make more complicated loops that can do more, more things, but for now we'll just do the one statement. So for instance, let's create an integer called counter, right? So this is a variable that we're going to use to control our loop. So again, Lots of things in programming can be done manually, but what if you had to to output a lot of stuff to the screen, you know? And so you you could put a bunch of different print statements, but that would be inefficient. So what if I wanted to to loop through and print something to the screen over and over again? So the way I might do that is I might say for. Now in the initialization, I have to initialize my counter variable somewhere. So let me start it uh, at zero, okay? and I'll put a semicolon and now I have to have a condition. This is going to tell me how long or how under what conditions will this loop continue to execute. So let's continue uh, as long as counter is less than or equal to 10. Now we have to increment or you can decrement your counter variable. So let's say counter is equal to counter plus 1. This is the most common for loop you might see. You're going to initialize some counter variable, well you've initialized it up here, you've declared it up here, but you're initializing it with your your the initial value of zero here. And then every time we go through the loop we're increasing the counter variable by one and we're only going to do this loop for as long as counter remains less than or equal to 10. As soon as it gets to be 11 it's going to jump out of the loop, continue on down your code and, and the loop is over at that point. So what are we going to do? Well we can, in this case, we can do a statement here. So we can do system dot out dot print ln you know and we could do anything we want but for the purpose of this discussion we could say uh, the counter is at space here let's do like this and then over here we'll do a plus and then we'll put counter variable like that so basically what's happening is we have a loop that's going from 0 up to 10 inclusive we're incrementing by 1 each time and every time we go through the loop we're printing the counter is at and then we're going to, to show the value of the variable there. So let's save it and let's run it and see what we have. So let me go ahead and make this console a little bit bigger so you can see the counter is at 0, the counter is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. When we looped through one more time on top of that, the counter variable became 11. And when the counter variable became 11, suddenly this was no longer true anymore. And so it bolted out of the loop and, and the, the program terminated because there's nothing else inside the main method. This is the simplest for loop you can create. Initialize a variable to some value, uh, bring it up, uh, you have some termination condition, and then you're incrementing it like this. Now I'm going to leave all of this stuff on the screen and show you a couple of things while we're here before we do much else. We don't have to start at zero. I can start the counter at five. So if I do from five, then it'll go from five up to ten inclusive, and I'm incrementing the counter variable by one each time. So let's print this guy and you can see the counter starts at five now and goes up to ten. All right, five and up to ten. So the initial value of the counter you can start wherever you want. Usually you start at zero or one but depending on what you're doing you may have a need to do something else. The incrementing over on the other end, right? Let me set this up to twenty. So we'll go up to twenty. The uh, incrementing over on the other end, you don't have to increase by one each time. In this case we're saying counter is equal to counter plus one. Well, We can do counter is equal to counter plus two so that every time we cycle through the loop the variable increases by two. So let's go ahead and run that. 
we can see that we start at 5, we increment, increment by 2, giving us 7, then 9, and so on until we get to 19. That's the last time going through the loop is going to work because if we add 2 to 19, we get 21. We get back here, counter is no longer less than or equal to 20, and so it jumps out at that point. And along those lines, you know, we can change this to 3 or you know, anything we want. It, it's all the same thing. It's going to start at 5 because we're starting it off at 5. We're increasing by 3 all the way up until uh, basically we bust this condition. In this case, it gets up to 20. So as long as the counter is less than or equal to 20, we're going to do this. If we add 3, we'll get 23. And then the loop is no longer uh, working anymore. So or is no longer valid anymore. So let me show you this. We've initialized our counter variable up here. And then, or I should say, we've declared our counter variable up here. We're giving it its initial value inside of our loop. This is the value that it's using to start at. All right, let me just set this back off to 0. And let me set this back off to 10. And let me set this back off to 1. Let me save it. Let me run this again. You can see we're going from 0 up until 10. This is where we started. Now, let me show you what happens. What do you think would happen if I say counter is equal to 17 right here? What do you think would happen? What do you think the loop would look like? Well, let's go ahead and save that and run it. You can see that the output you get is exactly what we had before. In this case, we initialize the counter variable at 17. But as soon as we go into the for loop, we initialize it again to 0. And then we do our loop. And then we jump out. So what I'm trying to point out here is the initialization that you see right here is going to overwrite whatever is in this counter variable to begin with. And then the looping is going to continue with incrementing as necessary until we get up to our uh, termination condition, in which case it's basically over. So let me go and take this out. And let me show you one more thing. Well, a couple more things, really. But a couple things are very important. So here we have counter is equal to counter plus 1. This means every time we go through the loop, we increment our counter variable by 1. And we've already seen how we can increment by whatever we want. But you have to trust me a little bit. As you start writing programs, you're going to find that incrementing your counter variable by 1 is extremely common. You're going to do that all the time. So Java has a shortcut for this. Instead of writing counter is equal to counter plus 1, you're frequently going to see counter plus plus. Anytime you see counter plus plus with two pluses immediately following a variable, it means increment the variable by one, by one. So let me hit save and let me run this and you will see that the output of the loop is exactly what it was before because the same thing is happening. We're starting at zero, we're going as long as the counter is less than or equal to 10, and we're incrementing the counter variable by one each time we go through the loop. Get used to seeing this because seeing plus plus, that's so common, you're going to see it in almost all four loops uh, and, and just lots of other places when you're incrementing a variable by one. All right, so let me go down here and let me create another one uh, counter, let's go ahead and call it counter two. All right, let's create another loop, right, for, and over here what I'm going to do, actually in between these loops, is I'm going to do print ln like this. So I'm going to give myself a blank line, and then I'm going to have another for loop, and we're going to do something with this other variable. Instead of incrementing like this, let's start high and decrement low. So let's say counter 2 is equal to, 100, right? And then we'll say counter is, we're going to do this as long as counter is greater than 50. Oops, like this. Okay, and then we're going to decrement because we're starting with a high value of the counter. This needs to be counter 2. And we're going to be going down. So we can do, we could do counter is equal to counter minus 1. Of course we could do that, but then we're going to be decrementing 100, 99, 98, 97. It's going to be a lot of decrementing. So let's decrement by 10 just to mix it up a little bit. So what are we going to do inside of this loop? So let's do system.out.println and let's just say um, counter to variable is add and then over here we'll do a plus counter so let's go ahead and save this. Let's try to run it and see what happens. Oh, we have an error. Let's see what is it. Now this is a great example of how when you're doing programming, 
um, things can creep in. See, I here I put print line with a, with nothing in it to, to give myself a space between the output here and the output that's going to follow. But Java doesn't know what that is. It needs to be part of the system dot out. And lastly, we look in here, we have counter is equal to 100, and counter 2 is equal to 100, counter 2 is greater than 50, and here I actually have, this needs to be counter 2. So all the variables inside the for loop need to match, right? So counter 2 is equal to 100, counter 2 is greater than 50, counter 2 is equal to counter 2 minus 10, and I'm printing out the value of counter 2. So let me hit save, and let me hit run here and see what we have. So the initial output that we had from before is still there. That's this loop executing right here. And then down here, counter two variable is at 100, 90, 80, 70, 60. And the reason that we didn't go down uh, to 50 is because here we're, turn we're only doing the loop when counter two is greater than 50. But you see, we were at 60, we subtract 10, we get 50, we come back up here, 50, is not greater than 50, that's equal to 50. So if you want it to execute and print 50 here, then you'll have to say greater than or equal to uh, there. So we can hit save and we can hit run and we can see it goes down to 50 here. So in this lesson, we really are trying to introduce the concept of the for loop. We're trying to show you that it consists of initializing a variable to an initial state, a termination condition after which the loop will stop, and an increment or a decrement. So here we're subtracting something. In previous times, we were adding something to the counter. If we're just going to increment by one, we can just have the variable plus plus. And then in this case, we have a single line that we're executing every time the loop goes through. In future lessons, we'll show you how to make more complicated for loops where you can do multiple things inside of the loop. This guy right here is just giving us this blank line between the execution of both of those loop statements right there. So now that you understand somewhat what loops are, what for loops are, go off to the exercises, work those problems there, get some practice, and continue on this journey of learning Java. Everything is building a skill that will become very useful, very handy, and indispensable going forward to learning all of the future topics.